When it comes to the Detroit Lions, the NFL rumor mill is always swirling, and there's always a wild amount of stories that go along with it. But this one has got to be probably the most wildest one yet. We're going to talk about it in today's episode, folks. Make sure you pop some popcorn. We used to be a team no one respected. We used to be a team no one feared. That was then. This is now. First victory of the year on the line. Goff's got it. Back, looks, throws, end zone. Yes! Caught! You know who we are. Ten, five, end zone! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! And you know where to find us. We won't be far. We'll be on your front porch waiting for you. We are the New Era Lions. And we are driven by Detroit. Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I am your host David T. Pike and we are diving in right now. As always to those that are coming back I just want to say thank you all for your view, your support, your patronage. Thank you all for returning to the show. It absolutely means the world to me. And to those that are tuning into my show for the very first time I want to say thank you all for giving my show a shot. Thank you all for tuning in. Hopefully I gain your subscription and to everybody I just want to say God bless. Hope you all have a great day. Hope you all enjoy the show and let's get to it. So here's a thing, folks. Hopefully, I'm not going to take too long with this one, but we need to talk about this because when it comes to the Detroit Lions, the rumors that come out are always crazy. They're always wild. There's a ton of really weird stories that come along with all this nonsense, and it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous sometimes what kind of gets put out as news or what people like to think is news or like to think that could potentially happen because let's understand something here. When we think about news and rumors, usually we're talking about, oh, players that are potentially going to get traded for, players that are going to get acquired. There's so many different things and variables that kind of come along with this territory that it's just absolutely crazy some of the takes that come out. But I'm going to tell you this right now. This one that we're going to talk about today absolutely takes the case because not only is it kind of crazy in the aspect of who we're talking about, but the conversation we're about to have is so ridiculous. It's so ludicrous. I cannot understand why somebody would put this out on the internet, why somebody would write about this, because this to me is just absolutely crazy. And this is why I say it takes the cake, because what this is coming from is coming from a beat writer who is a supposed Lions insider, and that's Dave Burkett. Dave Burkett has been doing a lot of news for the Detroit Lions over the last couple of years, actually probably even longer than that. I'm just talking about ever since I came on the scene. Dave Burkett has been doing a lot of stuff with the Lions. He's very well respected as far as, you know, the Lions are concerned. Not taking that away from him. But this this news report that he put out absolutely is just like ridiculous. It's over the moon. Because what is this rumor about? Let's just get down to the nitty gritty bit, nitty gritty about it. What's the rumor about? What's the news report about? What's the opinion piece about? Well, it's about probably one of the most recognizable players in the entirety of the Detroit Lions right now, and that's Amon Ross St. Brown. And what I'm referring to is this. Some people might have already heard about this. Some people might not have already heard about this. But by the end of this week, probably everybody's going to know about this. What happened is in a recent segment, recent segment, pardon me, of Burkett's like online mailbag, he was asked a question about Amon Ross St. Brown's upcoming contract because everybody forgets because of how good Amon Ross St. Brown is, is that he was only a fourth round draft pick. But Amon Ross St. Brown only has four years on his contract. He does not have that fifth year option that is used to having for a first round pick. Amara St. Brown, his contract is actually coming up really, really quickly to where he's going to have to get renewed for a new deal because he was drafted in 2021. It's now 2023, so he needs to get a new deal here before too long. But Amon Ross St. Brown has definitely not only earned a new deal, but he has earned a big new deal. Now, I'm going to say this about Burkett's segment really quickly. His segment, actually, before he got to the Alvin Ross St. Brown part, which we're about to talk here in a minute, actually had a rather good idea to it because, obviously, 
to kind of put the whole thing in motion, kind of set the table, so to speak. There's a lot of other contracts that are coming up for the Detroit Lions that people are worried about, people are thinking about, they're talking about, such as Jared Goff getting a contract extension. There has plenty, there's been plenty of reports, plenty of news where the Lions are in current contract negotiations with him. They're trying to extend him. There's also been reports about Jonah Jackson. We also know that Panay Sewell is somebody that's going to be coming up really quickly. There's a lot of mouths to feed that are coming up that are going to require some serious hard dough that are going to have to keep them around. Well, what Burkett suggested was that, okay, you use Panay Sewell's fifth-year option, you extend that fifth-year option, you accept it, so that way you keep Panay Sewell on the books for another year, but you're not paying him as far as a veteran contract. You still keep him on that rookie contract that he got when he got drafted back in 2001. That's actually smart, because what Burkett then suggested was is that you use that freed-up cap space by not giving him an extent, by not giving him a new contract, that's Panay Sewell, to sign players like Amon Ross St. Brown, like Jared Goff, like Jonah Jackson, all these guys that are going to require a lot of money and to also spread it around to other improvements such as for the defense, such as other pieces that are on the offense that also need extensions, things of that nature. So Burkett actually started out his segment with a really good suggestion. I thought it was an absolute brilliant stroke because it's like, hey, you still keep Panay Sewell on the team. You make sure he's still getting paid by picking up his fifth-year option, but you spread out that cap hit by making sure, okay, we extend golf. We sign back Jonah Jackson. We sign St. Brown. We potentially bring in some defensive improvements so that way when we go into the next year, we're better, where we are, we're better off than where we are right now. But after that, that was where everything kind of fell apart. Like, after that whole piece, that whole part of his segment... It just completely flatlined for me. Like, it literally went from being happy, go, go, to just absolutely just <laughs> just dead. I was just sitting there, I'm reading this, and I'm like, what in the hell am I reading here? Like, what in the serious hell am I reading? Because this is exactly why I, I literally have the title that I have, the thumbnail image I have as what the hell. Because I'm sorry, what I actually read next was just absolutely bewildering. Because when he specifically, I'm talking about Dave Burkett, specifically started talking about Amon Ross St. Brown and his contract, I'm going to say this right now. This was probably the most asinine remark that I have ever heard, or at least heard in a while. Because this is specifically what Dave Burkett said, and I'm going to put a screenshot of it up there while I read it. This is what he said about St. Brown. Burkett said, if I was St. Brown, I probably would hold out of training camp next summer when he's due a comparatively paltry base salary of $1.055 million. And then it puts in parentheses, that will go up once the proven performance escalator kicks in until I got a new deal. And that's Burkett, Burkett talking about Amon Ra St. Brown. I'm going to say this right now. Never in my life would I have thought that somebody would have put that out on the internet and actually opened up that can of worms, actually would have, you know, given light, given voice, given some sort of breath to this kind of thought process, to this kind of conversation, because this is literally a case of what I call open mouth insert foot, because I got to ask this, why in the literal hell would you even speak this kind of thought into existence? Why would you even bring it forth as a potential idea? Because I'm going to say this right now. This is unequivocally a ridiculous suggestion to give. Like, I don't even have to say how un just how ridiculous this is, but I'm going to. Because right now, this is one of those times where if I was the Lions, I would be calling up Burkett and I'd be like, dude, why are you making our job much more difficult? Why are you putting St. Brown on the spot? This is the kind of stuff that absolutely just drives Lions players in the organization, I bet, up a damn wall. This just makes them be like, dude, why do we have to deal with the press? Because this right here is what causes problems that don't need to actually exist. And here's why. Because let's think about this, folks, for a minute. Now that we've actually know what we're talking about here, now we know what the rumor is, the report is, the opinion piece is. Because this is where this gets really compared. This is, dude, let's just think about this here. The whole basis, sorry, my paper just fell down really quickly. I caught it. But here's the thing. When you hold out for more money, this causes an absolute bevy of problems. And let's just think about this from the perspective of not only the player in question, which is Amon Ross St. Brown, but let's talk about this from the team and the organization he plays for, shall we? Let's think about this. 
Holding out for a player, almost com- at least for Amon Ross St. Brown and the Detroit Lions, holding out for the Detroit Lions almost completely goes against the whole concept of what is Dan Campbell's grit mindset. It completely not only defies it, it completely is a, it's an anathema to, to Campbell's grit mindset. Because you have to think about this. Campbell's grit mindset is based upon one simple concept. You show up, you do your job, you come to work, you get ready to play. That is his mindset. Now, I got to ask a simple question here. How in the hell do you do that while you're holding out for a new contract? How do you show up for work? How do you go and do your job? Because if you're holding out, that means you're not showing up to team activities. You're not showing up to practice. So how in the hell can you do what Dan Campbell requires of you as a player, which is show up and do your job when you're holding out for more money? That literally makes no sense. It is the complete absolute opposite of that. And think about this. Holding out for Amon Ross St. Brown in this hypothetical absolute nut job situation is not going to do anything that helps neither St. Brown out or the team. Because think about it, when a player of St. Brown's caliber kind of sits out, it hurts everybody. It hurts the team, it hurts the player. Why? Because think about the situation that Dave Burkett put in this this scenario. It's happening at training camp. Training camp is the one time a year where you get the most ability to put in work, to put in practice with your team. You're building chemistry, you're building camaraderie, you're building esprit de corps, you're building all those different things while you're going to training camp. You're understanding how players react to each other, you're understanding how they work with one another. This, to me, actually shows a complete lack of maturity from a player. This, to me, shows a greediness of a player rather than actually saying, listen, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do my job, I'm going to do as Dan Campbell says that we as a team should do, which is we put our heads down, we bring our lunch pails into work, we do our job, which is we play to win. So for me, this is one of those situations that where you hold out as a player, you are doing nothing but hurting yourself and also hurting the team. And what are you doing it for? You're doing it all because because of money. Now, don't get me wrong. This leads me into my second point here. Players understand this business. It is a business. The NFL is a business. And everybody also understands this, that that every player is looking to get paid. So yes, you want to make sure you get paid. And I absolutely have no doubt in my mind that Amon Ross St. Brown is going to get paid. He's one of the best wide receivers in the game, arguably top 10 easily in my opinion. So let's think about this here. For a player of Amon Ross St. Brown's caliber, for a player of Amon Ross St. Brown's talent, and for what he brings to this Lions offense, to this Lions team, do you honestly think any chance in hell that freaking Brad Holmes is going to try and lowball Amon Ross St. Brown, or he's not going to give him a contract? I'm going to tell you this right now. There is absolutely no way that St. Brown will not get paid. He is going to get paid by the Lions. That is definitely going to happen. The only debate is how much is he going to get paid? Is it going to be more than $20 million a year? Is it going to be at $20 million a year? Nobody knows. But I guarantee you this, sure as God made little green apples, he is going to get paid. There is no debate on that. But again, kind of tying me back into this first top, the first point that I made, when you have a player that is more interested in making money rather than actually going out and doing their job, that's going to start causing schisms. It's going to start causing cracks in the foundation, especially for a team that has the locker room and the team chemistry that the Lions have. This is a team that is built upon a brotherhood. It's built upon a family. When you start having players that are selfish for themselves, even if it is trying to make money, that's going to start causing problems. So for me, it's like, I don't see that happening. I don't see Brad Holmes lowballing St. Brown, and I don't see St. Brown making his pure mission in life all about money. That just goes completely against St. Brown's character, which leads me into my third point here. Interesting how these all kind of line up. But think about this. If you think about Amon Ross St. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown's attitude, his character, Everything that we've heard from St. Brown or heard about him from his parents, from Dan Campbell, from Brad Holmes, from his other teammates, Jared Goff, the whole slew of them, all they ever say about Amon Ross St. Brown is one simple thing. All he cares about is winning and putting in the work. That's it. For a guy that literally goes to the jug machine and literally catches over 200 balls every single day after practice, do you honestly think he cares about money as much as he does winning? Do you honestly think that a player of his high character, of his high work ethic, is going to hold out at training camp to get more money because that's more important to him? That to me is just absolutely stupid. 
There, there is no possibility in my mind where this scenario could play out based upon Amon Ross St. Brown's attitude and character. And I'm going to say this right now. If this comes to pass, I know exactly who the hell I'm blaming. I'm blaming Dave Burkett because he's the one that spoke this nonsense into existence. So together, all together, pardon me, this is what I'm going to say about this idea or this suggestion. It's just downright laughable. The fact that Dave Burkett, of all people, is coming up with this idea or saying that if he was St. Brown, he would hold out, that to me is highly concerning because you have to think about this. Dave Burkett has a lot of followers from the Detroit Lions community. A lot of people listen to what he has to say. A lot of people take his word as some sort of credibility, which means his suggestions are not taken lightly, even if they are just a thought or just an idea. This, to me, is a very serious problem, and it's extremely exacerbating. Because exasperating. Because for me, it's like, wait a minute here. You are bringing to life, you are bringing an idea, something like this, a concept to life, simply because you want to make a click or a buck on this. Because to me, I don't understand why somebody would make a comment like this or make some sort of a, a, a post like this if they're not trying to get somebody's reaction. Because if you know Amon Ross St. Brown and his work ethic, there is no way this could happen. I don't see any possibility in this life or the next where Amon Ross St. Brown would not show up to training camp next year. Amon Ross St. Brown doesn't care about the money. In fact, I'd be willing to bet most of the players that the Lions have don't care about the money. They all know they're going to get paid, whether it's by the Lions or not. They will probably find homes somewhere else. That's what's happening to a lot of the Lions players. So for them, it's like, listen, we're going to go out and we're going to do our job. The contracts and the money will figure itself out later. So putting money ahead of the ability to win in the team is just absolutely ridiculous in my mind. The fact that I'm even talking about this is because I'm just absolutely flabbergasted. I cannot understand how someone like Dave Burkett can put this out there and say, yeah, even though it's his opinion, this is a pretty ridiculous opinion. And I'm not trying to start crap, but it's like, dude, if you're going to say something like this, you should know somebody's going to make a retort. And for me, it's like, I'm just sitting here, I'm just like, I don't understand this. This to me is just like completely ridiculous. But anyway, having talked about that, in expressing my thoughts and opinions about it. I'm sure I'm probably going to get something from somebody saying, who am I to say anything? It's a free country. I have the right to express my thoughts just like Dave does. But at the same time, it's just like, listen, I'm trying to figure out where this, co this, this freaking thought process, this concept came from. Because it's like, listen, for someone like Dave Burkett, I'd be like, listen, I would think you'd understand and know St. Brown's mindset probably a little bit better than this. Because this to me just doesn't make any sense. That's why I'm talking about this. But anyway, having said that, I am now going to sign off. And I just want to say thank you all for watching yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you liked what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode that I got coming at the end of this one. I also encourage you all, please, to make sure you do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past and you forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you not had a chance to do so, first and foremost, I want to highly encourage you all to make sure you do subscribe. It helps me out immensely, and I'm ever so thankful for every subscription that I get. But I also want to say this. After you subscribe, make sure you also do this. Make sure you also hit that bell notification icon as well, so that way you never miss any more content that I push out. Again, subscription numbers are always going up, but we want to make sure that we also get those those uh, notification icons turned on as well so that way as soon as I push something out you guys can come back immediately I also want to encourage y'all please share this content with your Lions friends and family members share it here on YouTube share it on Twitter share it on Facebook share it anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can and with that being said I just want to say thank you all for giving my show a shot thank you all for viewing the content hopefully you stayed all the way through and hopefully if I have not gained your subscription prior to now I was able to gain it but I also hope if I didn't gain your subscription you'll be able to come back and I'll get another shot to do so but until that time, I just want to say God bless again to everybody. Hope you all have a good day. Hope you all enjoy the show. And until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.